Hey guys, my name is Kyle O'Quinn and welcome to my home. Um, usually I'm behind a fortress of keyboards and synthesizers, but today I'm in my natural habitat with a piano to play classical and smoking weed at my house. Um, I fucking love smoking weed and I'm guessing most of you guys do as well. Uh, it's one of my biggest passions. I've smoked it every day since I discovered what it was and I've played music every day since I discovered what it was. So pretty much I'm combining two of my biggest passions and of course I was high when I came up with this, it goes without saying. My thought was to share some of my love for classical music and it's such a hard thing to dive into sometimes. I've been playing for over 20 years and I still find new composers, I'm still learning things every single day, it's a giant rabbit hole. But I just wanted to introduce you to some of my favorites and talk about them in terms of weed because most people don't understand uh, all the musical terms and stuff. So I hope this gives you a little insight uh, and it's okay again, not we don't smoke all of the weed all the time. Maybe uh, Chopin's a sativa you like in the morning and WC is an indica that puts you to sleep at night and you didn't know until you track. First piece I'm going to play is by Chopin and Chopin is the ultimate sativa. He very, very heady. Um, it was once said of his waltzes, they're for the soul, not the body. Because whenever I play them, people start to dance. And I always think of the body as the indica high. And Chopin's very, very, uh, very, very cerebral. Um, one of his students said, it's not that everybody loves Chopin, they love themselves inside of Chopin. One way to describe it is when you're, when you're listening to Chopin at a concert, everybody in the room is hearing the same thing, but we're all having a one-on-one -on -one connection with the music. Um, you can contrast Chopin to Beethoven and it'll really help you understand uh, some different ones. So Be Beethoven, in contrast, is super outdoors. Um, he's yelling a message from the top of a mountain and we're all hearing the exact same message. There's no question about it. Beethoven is so outdoors. He's like you're walking on a path, you pull up grab a nug off a tree, pull a leaf off the ground, or roll a blunt. That's fucking Beethoven right there. Chopin is very indoor, uh, you know. That's what I mean when I say indoor. You know, you think, uh, you think of like, fucking Paris and shit and ballrooms and stuff like that. Um, but the piece I'm gonna play is a waltz, and it is Opus 64, number two and I've paired it with Super Lemon Haze. Um, it's a very, very energetic, lively piece of music. Um, very pleasant. I always pair Sh uh, Chopin with things, uh, great sativas like Super Lemon Haze because they're instantly appealing. Anytime I pull it out of the bag, people go, oh, what's that? Anytime I play just a tiny bit of Chopin, everybody perks up and listens. So uh, this is the first piece and it's uh, his waltz in C sharp minor and I hope you enjoy it.
Yes, yeah, so I hope you guys like that. That's one of my favorite waltzes by him. Um, super accessible, super pretty, super nice. Just like fucking smoking super lemon haze. Um, yeah, Chopin is just the sativa. That's the best way just to remember him. Uh, as far as just getting a grip on all these different guys. Um, so next I'm gonna play a Russian composer named Alexander Scriabin, who's one of the most interesting characters in all of music. Um, he really liked Chopin, so it's a really good progression. He sounds like Chopin smoked weed pretty much. Uh, Chopin was peaking around 1830s. This is about 1890s in Russia, so Music's gotten a little bit weirder. Uh, Scriabin's most definitely fucking weird. Um, so this piece I'm gonna play, it's, it's totally dedicated to Chopin. Um, it's Opus 9 number 2, and Chopin's Opus 9 number 2 is very, very famous. Um, This is totally his nocturne uh, as a tribute to Chopin. And even though he's a lot like Chopin, um, he's Russian, he's heavier, he's denser, um, he's more agitated, and kind of like their literature and stuff, it's just heavier. So this one's actually paired with Purple Urkel. Um, reason being, nocturnes are well associated with nighttime. You know, Chopin, people are always describing his things like, Oh, you have to shade it like moonlight, you know, things like that. Um, so, this weed makes you go to sleep. <laughs> it fucking knocks you out at night. Um, it, the exact same effect as this piece. And another reason I did Purple Urkel is Scriabin is a very interesting character. He was the first composer to have synthesia, so he made a color wheel. And he was so smart, he left some of the keys open to account for like gamma rays and x rays. So it worked with like Newton's theories. Um, and that was the other thing. People would say about him that his ideals were so crazy, but you wanted to believe him when he talked to you. And something that he always, he always talked about flight and floating. And when you play the, the pieces, you have to be floating. And when people would disagree with him, apparently he would like walk off and he would mumble and he would be like, oh, what, what does he know? He's on the ground. So I kind of like that. Uh, He's, he's fucking trying to get high. He's not trying to stay down. Um, so I'm all about it. So I'm going to play this next option. And another reason, the last reason I did Purple Oracle is because it's geeky as hell. Because it was, uh, he had injured his right hand. And this is early in his career, so he didn't know if he was going to be able to play again. So that it's written just for the left hand. And I always like uh, playing this one because I smoke weed with my other hand while I play. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, slightly trippier Chopin uh, with one hand. So yeah, this is Alexander Shriabin and this one was written in 1894.
Thank you guys for listening. I uh, really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, when this quarantine lifts next year, I will be doing some of these live lectures and kind of diving in a little bit deeper. So hopefully see you there. We can fucking smoke some weed and shit. But in the meantime, stay safe. Stay fucking high. Don't be on the fucking ground, as Free Alvin would say. And uh, talk to you guys soon. Bye.